yeah, adaptation is fundamentally, I mean, essentially everything is an adaptation. Where, how many stories are there in this world? You know, we are constantly retelling our stories in different ways, different, um, you know, uh, methods. I think that adaptation, um, in order to, like, for somebody like me, a theater artist or a theater maker or a storyteller, the adaptation for me is understanding the audience. A, a, a great adaptation does not just retell the story. A great adaptation retells what you think the story is. The beauty of adapting something, and the reason that a lot of the time, a lot of the time you go to the movies, you see things that are done again and again. Like Ben Hur just came back to the movies this year. Why I don't know. The William Wyler was perfect. I don't think we need it. Um, but the reason that we, um, the benefit of doing a story that you know is that you already know the story. So, for instance, I was doing a version of, I was doing a musical version of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, um, 2011, somewhere around that, five years ago. I looked at all of the versions of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I looked at like the Tim, Ver the Tim Burton version and, and other versions, and what so many people tend to do in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is turn it into a murder mystery about who is the headless horseman, who's killing the, you know, yada yada. And the reason that they do that is because you, the audience member, have an expectation of what The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is in your, in your mind that is not necessarily what the story itself is. The story is relatively banal. It's kind of like a, a cautionary tale about, um, you know, Ichabod Crane being, you know, having the hubris, you know, and it's sort of like alluded to that um, Brahm is the headless horseman from the beginning just to scare him and that he's gullible. You know, it's, a, it's an old wives tale. But in our minds, it has magic and darkness and gothic romance to it. You know, we, that's, that's why it was a perfect candidate for a Tim Burton-style movie. You know, that's, a, some, that's a, something you go, oh, Tim Burton's making Legends of Sleepy Hollow. That makes sense. But because the story doesn't necessarily take that journey, people attempt to graft um, that onto it, and they end up doing it through a murder mystery, as I mentioned before. However, I felt that if I was going to do an adaptation of it, I needed to honor the, your concept of what the story was as much as the story itself. So when you are adapting, you are not just adapting the source material. You are adapting people's reception to the source material at the same time. If I've done my job, you have come to, the, to my story and have been fulfilled in your expectations and then exceeded in that. You go like, okay, I want, I came here to have this experience and I'm having it and oh my goodness, I'm having even more than that. And so in my version of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, you know from the very beginning that the Headless Horseman is Ichabod Crane. And the premise of my story is that Ichabod, um, I made this part up because it doesn't exist, but in my version of the story, Ichabod's mother was uh, burned as a witch by this community. And this community was very closed and, you know, a community that lived in fear and told their kids, you know, that the Headless Horseman was coming to get you, like the boogeyman in the woods. And so, and told them again and again. So anytime a child in this community would do something wrong, they would say, yeah, the Headless Horseman's coming to get you. You know, you better be good. And so when this horrible thing happens to Ichabod's family that his mother is burned as a witch unfairly, he goes away. And when he comes back to take his revenge on this town, he, t he dons the mask of the Headless Horseman. And so my story ultimately is about how we as a society of fear create the monsters that come and hunt us. And in that way, that is a story where people go, all right, I'm gonna come be a part of this legend of sleepy hollow world where there's a monster lurking in the woods that we made. And we watch almost like, almost like grafting the Revengers tragedy on top of that, to be like, watch this person get his revenge.